Now, I'm extremely excited to announce I'll be reading the palms of a direct descendant of the royal British family. This lady is the great great granddaughter of a royal British princess. Now, I'm not going to name the uh, princess because I want to keep this person's identity uh, confidential. I know this lady is 89. And other than that, I don't know a great deal about this person. And that's kind of the way I like to keep things. I took these pictures in person and straight away I noticed that there was, you know, a lot of the tendons tightening in the hands. And I kind of knew what this was, but I asked anyway, just to get to the bottom of it. It's Jupiter's contracture, or sometimes known as trigger finger, where the tendons tighten and the little, the Mercury and the Apollo fingers kind of curl in. And it's only seen with people who have high amounts of Neanderthal DNA. The, the Neanderthals now, they are ancestors of the Vikings, uh, who um, are ancestors of the Huguenots. And this lady also confirmed that she was related to the Vikings. Now, there are some really fascinating things about this person's life. First of all, we have a remarkable intuition line here. So strong, so long is it that it actually is a ring of Solomon or a ring of Jupiter, sometimes as it's referred to. And what this lady also has is a ring of Apollo. And I've never actually seen this before in person, in anyone's hands. There are just some remarkable features about this person's palms. And actually, in, in many ways, I love reading the hands of older people because everything that has happened is just so firmly embedded and it's not going to change. And so those lines of the past just do not change and how they've affected us as well don't seem to change. The road ahead isn't as long, so the lines tend not to change quite as much. And so what you see is what you get. In, in a way, it creates a very different reading. There is also a remarkable bow of intuition here as well. And, and this, you know, kind of enhances what we see here. The palms themselves are very long, aren't they? They're very long finger. And this is certainly a water hand, sensitive, creative, emotion, intelligent. Look at the length of the, the headline itself. It's, it's so long and it forks at the end. The, the mercury finger itself is certainly on the long side and and this is a mark of intelligence and the capabilities of this this person in terms of their artistic and creative ability expressive you know, are just so strong i wouldn't have said this person is you know extremely creative we don't see an overly developed amount of lunar but look at the left hand Part line. Look at how it reaches right up onto Jupiter and curls upwards up here. And this is clearly a mark of a philanthropist, someone who is who has a, a highly idealistic sense of what it is, a purpose about what it is that they should be doing, and what should be done in life. And this this loyalty line, you know, shows us these two things combined show us how this person's idea ideology there. Their values. Also, and this is noteworthy, the headline here, notice how there's a branch here, and you, you could say that actually it stems from both uh, you know, Jupiter and the inside of the ulna of the hand here, and it's disconnected from the lifeline, a common feature in water hands, a very sort of radical thinker, impatient, independent, and non-conformist. This mark of independence is further seen by the distancing between Mercury and Apollo fingers here. This is certainly someone who loves to travel and explore. Look at how low set the thumb is. And this is always a sign of a book lover and a sign of a humanitarian as well. And this is exactly, whoops, let's just see. This is exactly what you see here with this heart line, the way it reaches right up onto Jupiter. This is certainly someone who has a strong feeling about a, a strong cause and feels very strongly about human rights, about helping others, about, about you know, the, the good that needs to be done in the world, and, and feels very strongly about all of the bad in the world as well. And this, this likely weighs down on them. And this is partly the reason for so many lines in the hand, this person being a water hand, being this empathic, sensitive um, and 
having a strong capacity for emotions, the, the, the negatives in the world really weigh down on them. And also this fate line here is remarkable because not only does it stem from Luna, which is almost always, it means one of two things. Someone working in a career with others, helping others. You always see it on the hands of nurses, HCAs, and support workers, carers. And I'm not always doctors, but that's a slightly different field. But you always see it in the hands of people who wish to support, help, and have great compassion. And the other thing it can mean is that it's set to have... It's said to be a sign of someone who wishes to have a career with an audience. And as such, industries that are creative, the fortunes of which wax and wane. And so to do the fortunes of the individual, their luck. And so this person's luck has probably been very up and down throughout their life. But what this also means, the depth of it, just how far low down it reaches into Luna is a sign in Indian palmistry of someone who has reincarnated with a purpose, with unfinished business from a past life to complete and carry out work that they couldn't in a life previous. Now, I noticed a couple of fascinating features here on the left hand. Look at this attachment line here. As it travels down, it's across the heart line, it's through a very painful period of their life, an island here, and it almost kind of forms an eye, sort of an ominous sign. And as it reaches down, it kind of bows back upwards again and cuts the fate line, crosses the headline. This person's emotional and psychological state were impacted by uh, the events in this relationship and clearly affect their fate as well, their path and journey in life at the probably um, age of 35, I believe. This person lost a husband, potentially, at the age of 35, or a partner, someone they loved. Um, and then, this isn't the only thing, look at this. You have here a line that reaches right up and around Mercury. It's almost a ring of Mercury. And actually what this is, is a sign of someone who is a sign of the widow. I have done a palm reading already on the, the hands of her person who has this sign and it's a sign that uh, it being in the left hand it's a feeling that I'll, I'm going to be alone for the rest of my life I'm not going to remarry again I'm going to be um, single and perhaps that's because of this freedom this you know the sense of impatience this person has and that need for independence perhaps this person didn't want to be tied down and they, they kind of felt like they were going to be alone but actually that sacrifice was worth it maybe they weren't getting maybe there's just no need for marriage, for this person. Maybe it doesn't fit in line with uh, their values. Now on the right hand, if we look at this same attachment line and, and, and look at how it affects this person physically and materialistically, practically speaking, this relationship was, I mean, tremendously difficult in some respect. There's a lot of hurt here. And look at how it reaches down towards the heartland. And this is showing a, a need for emotional physical support um you know it, it uh, marriage lines that bend downwards show how the relationship itself brings us down it's a burden in itself and as it does it sort of touches this immense sun line this hollow line is i don't think i've ever seen anything like it and it's the sort of sun line you'll see in palmistry books as an example of what a sun line is, but in fact, in real life, you never see them like this, except for this one here. This is remarkable. I've never seen anything like it. And you see it on the hands of maybe a child protege, a genius, or someone who is remarkably successful, remarkably positive. Remember, the sun line shows us it's, it's all about joy, it's our, our pursuit of happiness and peace and prosperity, success. And what success is to everyone is, is very individual. And so for this person, they, it's, it's, it's just, it means quite a few things, I think. And for this person, it does as well. It's not just a one thing. It doesn't mean just happiness or just money. 
or just success. And I'll get back to the Sun line here. I'll get back to this Apollo line and its meaning. But look at this. The way this relationship affects this person's happiness, it, it's, it's sort of, it does kind of weaken the strength of this person's peace and their prosperity, their happiness ahead. However, it sort of derails this person's success and points it towards more of a place of freedom. So at the, the ending of this relationship created freedom, but also in some way um, reduced some of this person's success. And look at the sheer the strength, the length of these uh, many vertical lines on the Mercury Mount. These are the signs of uh, sometimes known as healing stigmata or good Samaritan lines. And we already know this person is certainly a good Samaritan. There's just no doubt about it. This is a wonderful um, person to be around. There's, they're, they're an extremely positive influence on the lives of many. And that's also um, indicated by the length of the headline itself. When we see a headline that reaches all the way across the other end, the other side of the hand, it shows us someone who is, it shows a few things, potentially someone who is quite obsessive, actually. And that obsession, that drive, that determination to, to carry out their work, to think in such a way that it, uh, their mental academic efforts affect the lives of many. And that's what this, uh, the length of this line sort of represents as well. Their work will go on to affect the lives of many, their decision making. And, and that's what this also represents. This ring of Solomon here, almost a perfectly formed ring of Solomon here. It touches the branch, it touches the heart line as the heart line rises up in between Saturn and Jupiter, a clear indicator of someone with a strong sense of right and wrong. And the reason why this intuition line here, really, which is what it is, it's not, it's not a fully formed ring of Solomon, but it's so very near. Um, it may as well be. But what this means is this person affects emotionally, um, has an ability to influence, have a strong emotional influence on the lives of others, on that impact on others in a very sort of positive way. Now, if this person was a deceitful person and they had this marking, it would be quite a negative sign because it would mean that they have a strong power of uh, manipulation. And certainly this person is an excellent persuader. They know how to use and articulate. Uh, they know how to use language. They have excellent ability to craft uh, words, speech craft, if you like. And uh, they likely have a strong writing ability. And that's what this represents here, this fork in the headline here, writer's fork, as it's known. And it just provides superb perspective and ability to see things from more than one angle. And at worst, it can create a bit of indecision, a bit of an indecisive nature. Um, and certainly at best, it is extremely productive and useful to see things from more than one angle, to be open-minded. It, it broadens the uh, ability to, of perspective, but it can make people sit on the fence a little bit. Now, this I've mentioned here, the disconnect between the life and the headline, it's a marvelous sign in, in a lot of respects. It creates um, you know, a way of seeing things that other people don't, a way of doing things um, very unconventionally and uh, thinking in a very sort of abstract way, radical thinking, non-conformist thinking, but at the same time, it's this sort of impatience and this brashness, a quickness to act without thinking, and it's known as the mark of the tiger in Tibetan palmistry. And at worst, this could be, you know, brash decision-making, someone kind of getting a bit annoyed potentially with their own decisiveness and just going for a decision. And this can lead to mistakes. This can lead to injuries and um, potential errors in uh, financial matters as well, and, and potentially with uh, judgments in terms of you know, managing people. And why that's relevant is because the, the headline here, it, 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 so, it begins so high up on Jupiter, as it does, I've already mentioned, there's a branch here, and this isn't an, an ambition line, but it's coming from the headline. And so it's, 
it's so strong here. It's almost showing us this is where the headline is coming from. It's coming from this place and this place. And this is always the sign of a leader, a sign of someone who has the charisma and influence and the ability to manage people very well. And it's a very ambitious nature as well. It's a really positive sign uh, to have in this. It's just remarkable because this person has all the kind of hallmarks that you'd hope and expect to see in um, actually someone, a, a very high profile figure, someone, you know, a working royal. And it's just, this person may not be a royal by name as such, but this person has, it seems, all of the hallmarks of a, a just a fascinating and brilliant individual. One thing I do notice is the phalanx of Jupiter is on the wide side and you see it on the left as well. And this is always, whoops, this is always compensation for, it's always um, a need to sort of dominate and control physically. And this is more around uh, food, uh, drinking, drugs and sex that's what this kind of represents and with this person i would likely think that this is food perhaps alcohol and i'm not seeing a tremendous gap here between saturn and jupiter thankfully if i did then i would think this person may have potential eating problems but in fact i think this person had an excellent relationship with well i am getting a bit of a gap there but i'm not getting one here so I would think this person had a good relationship with their father. And I do see that the Jupiter finger is longer on the right hand than on the left. This person is tremendously confident and, as I say, just a born leader. They have a good sense of self-worth. They have a great understanding of their own capabilities. And I say that because Apollo here, it's, it's we're not getting a a perfectly accurate sense of just how long this, these fingers are in comparison with each other because of this trigger finger because of the Jupiter's contracture but this person certainly does have a good sense of what they are capable of a, a very realistic idea of their own capabilities now i want to talk a little bit more about this um, almost perfect ring of solomon and the, the reason why it touches this heart line here is because it allows this person to pick up on other people's feelings. And being so compassionate, this person sort of knows the right things to say and do to solve other people's problems. There's almost a, a telepathy here. And Neanderthals are actually said to have been telepathic. It's possible that this person is highly psychic. And I say that also because of the Mercury line particularly in the left hand here, being long hands, fingers and water hands are always much more um, likely to have extrasensory inclinations and abilities anyway. But this Mercury line, it's, this is known as a bow of intuition, and it somehow seems highly connected to this this marriage line, this attachment line here that, that quite literally went south. Present with this kind of intuition line, with its beginning and end, this strong bow here, this type of bow of intuition. Because some begin high up on Luna, some very low down, some end in outer Mars. Well, this person has a strong capability to take command of their own um presence their own hypnotic almost gifts they have a good command of their own intuition and sensitivities to a point where they utilize these for positive um in influences and, and would be a highly able uh, politician a lawyer um an entertainer a public speaker or, or a writer or, or an actor someone who is commanding projecting and really utilizing the deeper uh, capacity capabilities of expression and communication essentially they're using this for good and you know i've mentioned this person being good and several indicators of the palm show this and one of these is the way the headline here 
and the heart line, you know, the, the heart line and the head line, where they space out towards the percussion side of the palm. This this shows us this honesty, the integrity of character, an open and generous nature. It shows someone who's generally straightforward, wise, and firm, firm but fair. Now, you may have noticed that the lifeline, very interestingly, is overlapped here as it carries on. And this shows how this person, the lifeline, it represents our vitality and our constitution, our um, love of life and how we live our lives, and, you know, obviously our health. But it also represents our environment. And so when the lifeline moves away outside of the familiar, the home, life, the domestic sphere. It moves outside to continue onwards, further away towards Luna, the place of travel and restlessness. It shows us this person has moved and changed the way they live their life. The way they live their life has moved into a bold position, a bold place. They have chosen to do something quite dramatic, perhaps, uh, to dramatically change the way in which they live their life and it might not have seemed to others potentially um, that they have dramatically changed the way they live their life and they may have just moved but indeed the way they now live their life their routine and everything out there daily living has completely changed physically speaking uh, and this is a big change whereas on the left hand we don't see this this is not an emotional change in the in the daily sort of living this isn't uh, a domestic uh, familial change this is certainly um, a move and this occurred at the age i'm going to say about 35 and i think this kind of coincides with what we've seen about the attachment line here on the left hand crashing down and i'm kind of you know cutting the fate line at 35 35 seems to be and i see it time and time again in palmistry it's a multiple of seven. And they say that every seven years, we change, our cells change. We're no longer the same person every seven years. It was Shakespeare that said, all the world's a stage. And in this speech that he wrote, his, his seven ages of man is in it. And it's relevant in palmistry because karmic years tend to land every seven years. I see it time and time again, and 35 almost always tends to be such a strong crossroads position for people's lives. And 35 in palmistry is where the fate line touches and meets the headline for most people in palmistry, and it's almost bang on in the center of people's palms. And the average age for a person's life, or at least their uh, the way they live their purpose in life. The average age in Britain for the for, for men, I believe, is 77. For women, it's a little bit longer. It's more like something like 80, 83, something like that. But the way we live our lives and our purpose, our career, which is why the fate line is often called the career line, it's, a, it's about 70 years. That's how long this line stretches for. Now, for this person... It's clearly longer because they are older. This person, I believe, is 89. And you can see their career line. It's, it's unstoppable. It's one of the strongest lines post-heart line. Something I do want to talk about here before I move on with the fate line is that there is more than one. We see two fate lines here. And that's almost always a sign of someone who has um, extra ambition extra purpose, a hobby alongside their career. They have a duality about their destiny, and there's more than one purpose to their cause, so to speak. There's more than one string to their bow, certainly, as well. The fate lines here are very faint before this person reaches 35. Now, fate lines are also uh, almost sort of barometers of spinal health, bone health. And water hands are highly susceptible to bad bats. And I've seen it before in hands, um, particularly water hands, where the fate line kind of jars. It sort of it rises upwards and then 
you know, jarringly snakes left and right and up. And this shows, this is almost always a sign of a back injury, spinal injury, spinal operation if other signs occur. And for this person, the one thing I do know about this person is that they have um, osteoporosis. And I and I, I am kind of speculating here because I'm not sort of saying this for a fact because I don't know it. The, the way this fate line becomes so faint could be an indication of bone health. Now, it could be at some point it could be that this is a progression of lines, that these these lines have faded quite recently, and actually they were once very strong. And this is, again, you know, it's sort of an indicator, a sign of bone health, bone density, perhaps, that sort of thing. I'm wondering if that is the case. And I'm kind of just sort of doing a bit of my own investigation. And what I noticed past the age of 53, this person's career is incredibly strong. They're purpose at least in life their path their destiny is focused and they are on one straight um, intense course they're, they they have a mission almost and also i see the success line of this person is interesting because it sort of splays out like a plant like a it's almost like a flame and partly this is, you know, the appearance of this is partly because of the Dupatron's contracture, but also these many fine lines, these tiny fine lines here, show this person has separated their successes. They have, they've got so many irons in the fire, they're not really able to achieve any one thing very well. There's lots of separate income streams. And I think that once they make money from one thing, they kind of invest it into another project and another one. And this is partly why we have this sort of duality of the fate lines here. And in a sense, it sort of seems like this this flame, this fire that's rising up. It's, it's like this person spending their money in order to um, create another success, which is having a knock-on effect on another one. So there's no one singular sort of success or, or, or money maker, but this splaying out effect of the sun line here on the Apollo Mount is a wonderful sign because it's showing this person their, their capabilities, their influence. It's just having its outwards positive effect. You know, it's, it's reaching outwards into expression, outwards into their contribution into society, into their traditional values. And, uh, and their own um, sense of uh, duty and honour. And this girdle of Apollo is a very interesting marker because, as I said earlier on, I haven't ever seen this before, and it directly corresponds here with these successes. Well, the sunlight shows us the sunshine in our life, what makes us happy, and so often for most, it represents money because that brings us freedom and the girdle of apollo here for many people this represents difficulty in uh, financial luck and it shows here this obstacle in the way of this person's many um, pathways to uh, prosperity and happiness Often it's seen in the hands of gamblers because they are their own worst enemy in terms of how they um, pursue their financial uh, fortune, their own financial luck. However, it's not always an indicator of barrier towards you know, finances. And in this case, it could well be more of a, an emotional because money really isn't everything, particularly not to this person. And because the heart line does have some difficulties here, because there are some health issues, because there has been some emotional damage here, it's extremely important because this may well be an indicator of a warning against um, about who to do business with, uh, relationships in business and business partners. 
And I think in many ways this person has already learned this lesson. And this is perhaps why they decided to be single after the failure of the this uh, initial relationship. Because there's risk involved when we commit. And I think being so wise, being so straightforward and honest and intuitive, I think this person likely knows the lesson I've already mentioned. I have to say there is so much here to unpack. I could go on for so long. I'm going to go on forever. Notice here, this is a tremendous loyalty line. A via mater, sometimes as it's referred to, a mother line. And notice the island that develops here as it reaches and touches the lifeline. And where it does, I can't help but feel this is some loss of a parent of some sort at the age of, I'm going to say late 50s, probably about 59, something like that. Notice thereafter, we have here travel line. It looks like this person traveled. And inside all of this, we have a square. So it's possible that there was some uh, travel back home after this time. I don't know exactly. There's travel here. And then there's potential kind of isolation from society. This was an incredibly painful time. I think a lot of difficulties within um, you know, the family. A lot of things had to be sorted out. Of course, we have here a teacher's square on the Jupiter Mount, and it's always a sign of graciousness and humility that information is protected, guarded, and uh, passed down. And that's sort of what that represents. You always see it on the hands of people who are compassionate and just very humble. So I'll leave you on a note here. Now, I mentioned earlier on that 35 is so very often a karmic year for people. It's a multiple of seven. And, you know, I mentioned later on in this, this person's life, late 50s, there was a traumatic event involving parents here, and it's likely the loss of a parent. And I said late 50s. Well, another multiple of seven, being that 35 is a karmic year for this person, it's likely that this was actually 56. And this is how it's useful in palmistry. Once you've got a key marker of a certain event and you know that this, this is highly impactful, that it was a, a crossroads moment in their life, as was this move, then you can begin to uh, use that as a sort of baseline and uh, further predict more accurately. And as I say, with older people, it's the past is all there. It's a much easier read in terms of dating and timing events. So it was much more likely that this person lost a parent at 56. I'll find out when I speak to them. In any case, I'd like to know what your thoughts are on this palm reading. And perhaps you've picked up on things that I haven't mentioned. As I say, there's so much to mention here. But I just wanted to share with you this fascinating individual and a truly remarkable person. Thanks for watching and please subscribe.